God for his goodness. This morning, would you get the elements that you have prepared? I want to bless them as we're going to take communion together. We are thankful for this day. We are thankful this is the day that he has made. We are thankful that he has won our victory. We are victorious because he won our victory. Now, if you hold those elements right there that you have, let me bless them. Let me even bless them here in the sanctuary before we pass them out. Father, we thank you that the wafer takes on the attributes of your body and the juice takes on the attributes of your blood. We thank you that we come because you have commanded us to come. We come because we can come. We come because you're our Lord. We come because you're our Savior. Because you won the victory for us at Calvary. And we prepare our hearts, oh God, to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Get your elements ready. Bless the Lord. We'll serve those who are here in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you because you first loved me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's wonderful how your children are taking communion with their parents right there in your sanctuary on your sofa that you've made a sanctuary, around the kitchen table that you've made a sanctuary. Nothing will stop us from praising the Lord. Nothing will stop us from coming into his gates with thanksgiving. Nothing will stop us from coming into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we bless him. We thank him and give him all the praise, all the praise all the praise thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord we're just waiting till everyone here has been served thank you Lord the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. The Bible says, on the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents a new covenant, a covenant in my blood. You understand the old covenant, but I'm implementing a new covenant. This covenant in the blood of Jesus Christ, not the blood of calves and goats, but the blood of the crucified lamb, the spotless lamb, the only son of the living God, brings us into a place of unity with Christ Jesus, brings us into a place of being able to receive all that he has given to us, brings us into a place of being the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, brings us into a place of walking out our salvation, walking it out in the earth realm because his blood was shed in the earth realm for us to walk it out in this realm. We're so thankful for the blood. Let's drink together. From day to day, it will never, it will never. Overseer is going to come at this time. We're going to do the banner over our church, which is Psalm 91.
gives me strength from day to day. You'll never lose. It will never lose. It will. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To ask everyone that is worshiping with us this morning, wherever you are, please stand on your feet. Place your right hand over your heart as we decree what is the banner over our church, our Pledge of Allegiance, Psalms 91. Love Ministries, I know that you carry Psalms 91 with you. You who are visiting with us this morning, Psalms 91 will appear on the screen so we can decree together. Let's decree the word of the Lord together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Get your Bible out. Stand on your, still standing on your feet. And say, this is my Bible. I am who it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I can have. I will let this word become alive on the inside of me so that I will become alive in the word. Amen and amen. You may be seated. You will need that Bible today. We are going into some places in the word. Gracious Father, how we thank you. How we praise you. How we honor you. Now we ask, oh God, that you speak to your people. Think through my mind, speak through my lips. Let your word be established in the hearts of these thy people. We'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Going to talk to you today about thinking to bring manifestation. Thinking to bring manifestation or thinking to produce. Because I want you to understand that you are special to God. You are special to God. God chose you. You know, we used to hear people say, I found God. You didn't find God because he wasn't lost. We were lost. He chose us. He picked us. And if I'm talking to you today, he chose you for such a time as this. He chose you to be alive in the earth with the activity of your limbs with a mind to come into the place of God and think the thoughts of God for such a time as this. For if we ever needed a time to think like God thinks, it's now. Amen. 
If there ever was a time that our mind had to be renewed, it's now. I want you to know that there's great potential in you. I want you to know that you're special. I want you to know that you were chosen for such a time as this. Let me remind you, before you were in your mother's womb, God picked you. He put potential in you. And now he's coming for what he put in you. I know we all went through some stuff from the time we were born until the time we were born again. And many of you think all the things you went through in that time frame has disqualified you for what God is going to do in your life. But God who is rich in mercy, yeah. God who is infinite in power, yeah. God who never makes a mistake said, I knew what you were going to go through, not only up to the time that you came into the kingdom, but even since you've been in the kingdom. Yeah. That, that ought to give somebody hope right there. That even since I came into the kingdom, I've missed the mark. Even since I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, I have not walked exactly like I should have walked. But I am coming to the place where what he put in me, it's time for him to, it to come out. And let me tell you, it starts with your thinking. We've had this thing wrong. We thought it started with our speaking. So we spoke from a broken system that didn't produce anything. Because the system was broken, it couldn't produce. Because until your thinking change, your speaking doesn't have power. Until your thinking changes, your speaking doesn't have power. And let me tell you what we do. When we speak something, and we even think we're speaking it in faith, and we don't see it manifest, we come up with our own idea about why it didn't come to pass. And then we dilute and neutralize the power of our church. Because now all of a sudden we're saying things, but we really don't believe that they're going to come to pass. We come up with religion, religious rhetoric, and we don't believe that it's going to come to pass. But today, your thinking is about to get dushed in the blood. Your thinking is going to be washed in the blood. Your thinking is going to be renewed. And in the next 30 days, there's at least 30 of, us, of you watching today who are going to see a renewed mind and some things happen. Turn to Proverbs 30, 32. It says, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay your hand upon your mouth. See, the thought is before the speaking. And that shows us that the Satan is after your thoughts. He wants your thoughts to be of an evil conscience. He wants your thoughts not to agree and line up with the word of God. But God is after your thoughts too. God is after your thoughts. And what you think on continuously, you become. What you think on continuously, you gravitate to. What you think on continuously, you pull into you. Your thoughts are so powerful, they can draw things to you. Amen. And your thoughts are so powerful, they can make you repel things. Amen. You know, if we look at the television today, oh my God, between the coronavirus and they tell you there's something wrong with your brain, they tell you there's something wrong with your, huh. with your mind, they tell you there's something wrong uh, with your heart, they tell you there's something wrong with your thyroid, they tell you something wrong with your blood system, and then they tell you you're depressed on top of it. And just take three, three of these until you die. And if you're not careful, you will fall for that rhetoric. And you'll start thinking, you know, my leg was hurting. Maybe there's a clot in it. You know, my arm did freeze up on me. Maybe the blood is not getting through. You know, I can't remember as well as I used to. Mm, my, 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 my. See, but let me tell you something. John 6.63 says that my words are spirit and life. Mm -hmm. So your spirit, your human spirit, your human spirit, 
The job of your human spirit is to speak life into every situation. And in order to speak life, you have to think life. So my soulish area, my soul, my mind, my will, my inner man, my emotions have to think like God thinks in order for me to speak like God speaks. Turn to Proverbs 23, 7. It says, for a man, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if I think I'm sick, I'm sick. So if I think I'm broke, I'm broke. If I think I'm always going to be in this situation, guess what? I'm always going to be in this situation. For as a man thinketh, it doesn't say as he seeth. It says as he thinketh, so is he. It's, let, let, me, let me put it like this. It's called the power of suggestion. And because the enemy has done it, now he's added sorcery to it. So that even saved folks are being fueled by the enemy. You, don't turn me off because I'm messing with your doctrine because you'll get set free if you hang in here with me this morning. You'll be delivered if you hang in here with me. Suggestion is being fueled by sorcery. That's why you need a pill for everything. That's why you're going through some of you during this time of quarantine with God are fighting the same demons you were fighting four years ago. You know that ought not to be. You know the enemy has a hold in your soulish area. If you are still fighting things that you know you have enough word to have been delivered of. And you know your thinking, your mind, your will, your emotions, your subconscious, your consciousness, your imagination has been corrupted by the world system. But the good news is today, Jesus has come to set you free. And today, today, we're bringing you enough word and enough scripture so that deliverance is coming to your house today. Sometimes, you know, you can't look at the news. If you look at the news, you'll think the economy is going to fall and this is going to happen. But guess what? You need to decide which economy you're in. You need to decide which system you're in. Now, now, notice when the enemy first came to Eve. Let's, let's go back to the garden for a moment. When the enemy first came to Eve, he came to her and he told her that God was withholding something from her because he didn't want her to know everything he knew. I'll say with me right there. God has never withheld anything from you. See, the truth was God had hidden everything about Eve in her. Uh, and as she walked in obedience to him, she would see her potential revealed. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Everything about you is in you. God put it in you when he chose you before you were in your mother's womb. He put the potential in you. He put the gifting in you. He put the calling in you. It'll never be revealed until you walk it out in obedience. You don't just walk it out. Every step of obedience opens up another phase of the potential that he's put in you. And every step of disobedience sets us back from where he's calling us to go. That's why my sheep hear my voice. My sheep are led by my spirit. My sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger. The stranger that's been lurking in your head. I'm coming after him this morning with the word of God. I'm not coming after him in my might because I have no might. I'm not coming after him in my intellect because my intellect won't defeat him. But I'm coming after him in the name that's above every name, in the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, in the name of Jesus the Christ. He told her a lie. He kept her off track so she didn't realize that she had something to do. So, see, you're not really missing anything because everything is in you. All of our potential is in us. And as we obey him, we work it out. 
So it is in our thinking. People are not poor because they don't have a good job. People are not poor because they don't have any money. People are poor because they think poor. People are poor because they don't think they have enough. People are lacking because they never think they have enough. It's how a man thinketh, so is he. If you look at Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4 and 10, you don't have to go there right now. We'll go there at the end. But Jabez found out that his problem was not money. So he never asked God for money. He asked God to enlarge his territory. That word territory means enlarge my thinking so that I can see myself like you see me. Oh. I know you're writing, enlarge my thinking so I can see myself as you think me, see me. Because until I see me like you see me, I'll never have what you have for me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless I see me like you see me, I will never apprehend. It'll never come to me. I'll see it all around me, but never think I'm good enough to obtain it. His mother had named him pain because of the pain, she excruciating pain she experienced in childbirth. So all he could see around him was pain because that's what he was called. So he didn't go to God and say, take me out of this pain. Give me a big house. Give me a... He said, no, enlarge my territory. Your territory is in your mind, folks. Oh. Your, your, your land is in your mind. What you apprehend is in your thought pattern. Lord, you've got to change. I need you to change the way I think about me. Yeah. Oh, oh, it starts with yeah. me. Yeah. No sense in you trying to love me and you don't love you. Oh. Wow. It starts with me. No sense in you thinking that God loves me more than he does you. We're all made in his image and his likeness. We all have different callings and different anointings and different giftings. So the potential is in me is not better than the potential in you. It's just different then. And different then is not better than. It's just different then. A steak is not better than a chicken. It's just different. It just has a different flavor. Now, they might do different things to your bloodstream, but that's for you to work out. But they're both meat. They're both in the protein. They both will do the right thing for your system if eaten properly and cooked properly. Yeah, yeah. They have a different flavor. They're different then, but one is not better for then. Mm -hmm. One might be better for your particular body uh -huh. than the other one. But that's because you have to know what's good for your particular. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. He asked God to enlarge his ability to see himself as God saw him. If I can fix me to see me how you see me, then I can have what you have for me. See, your image of you has a great deal to do with what God can use you to do. And in these days, oh, I'm talking to people who are living through a pandemic. I'm talking to people. This is not the last pandemic. Okay. I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom. I'm just telling you there's another one on the way. Mm -hmm. And if this one has wiped out your thinking yeah. pattern, oh my God. the next one, if you got to take Valium on this one, yeah. if you can't sleep on this one, yeah. if you don't know what to do on this one, when the next one comes, you'll want to give up. Mm -hmm. And God said, this is the time right in the middle of famine that I'm getting ready to bless you. Okay. This is the time right in the middle of famine where I'm going to bring potential out of you. Yeah. This yeah. is the time right in the middle of famine that you're going to see you're the head and not the tail. This is a time in the middle of famine that you and your household will be saved. This is the time in the middle of it. That you'll see that no plague shall come nigh thee. Neither shall any plague, rather, come nigh your dwelling. 
This is the time. This is the time. But we got our image messed up. We think a car is more important than we are. You, you, you mixed up. You get to heaven, you walk on streets of gold. You open up gates made out of pearls. And yet you think a material thing is more valuable than you are. Look at somebody. Elder, look at, look at Judith. Tell her she is valuable to God. Look at, look at somebody. Tell them they are valuable to God. You are valuable to God. And you're not only valuable to God, you're valuable to God's plan in this earth. In this earth. If you weren't valuable to God's plan in the earth, you wouldn't need to be here. And in order for you to accomplish what God wants you to do, your thinking has to be right. When I get my thinking right, I can get my speaking right. And then my spirit, according to John 6, 63, my words, your words are spirit and they are life. Spiritual things control natural things. And we are made to speak what we expect. And as I think in my heart, that's what I'm attracted to. And that thinking in Proverbs 23, 7 is continual. It's continue. It's where you dwell. It's where your thought life is. So is he or so he becomes or the place where he ends up. You will never end up in a wealthy place thinking poverty thoughts. You will never end up in a healthy place thinking sick thoughts. You will never end up in a successful place thinking unsuccessful thoughts. Haven't you noticed that you see people with less intellect and everything succeeding in areas that you even had an idea to succeed in? And doesn't it irk you? Wait a minute. God, they're not even as smart as me. They don't even have as much going for them as me. They, Lord, some of them don't even know you. Why is it they're able to do this? And I know you place this in my heart because they think they can do it. They think they can do it. They think it is possible to them. They think nothing shall be withheld from them. And because they think it, guess what? It shows up. Philippians 4, 8 says, manage your mind. Manage your own thoughts. That's what it says. He said, look, you want me to make you think something? No, I'm going to show you. You manage your mind. He said, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true. Is it yeah. true? You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I passed an age group now where, where I guess they would call me a senior citizen. I, I, I guess that's what they call me. And I started to notice some things were happening in my body. And when I would talk to people about them, they would say, but you're 73 years old. That's why it's happening. And I started thinking like, that must be happening because I'm 73. Oh my God, you're helping us. But then the Bible said, what's with ever things are true. Yeah. The word says my ladder would be greater. Oh. 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 The word said that my ladder was going to be greater. It didn't say in my ladder. I would need a, a thing around my neck in case I fell down and I couldn't walk up the steps in the house that the Lord gave me and, and somebody would have to check on me every night to make sure I was okay. That's good. That's the word. He said, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things, wait a minute, let's go back to it. Whatsoever things are honest, uh -huh. ah, whatsoever things are just, Oh, now see, that's a whole sermon right there. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a, of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. If you're looking at the news, you think you're not, the stimulus check didn't get paid. Since when do you live off $1,200? Right. 
I'm so sick. If one more person tell me that the stimulus check didn't get paid, are you just living? If $1,200 will break you, you're broke. Not saying $1,200 will not help you, but is your whole life around a stimulus check? Or does your help come from the Lord? How do you think? Are you so programmed that somebody's supposed to bring you something? Well, God has dispatched ministering angels sent to be spirits for those who would be the heirs of salvation. They can bring you. If I told you the stuff that comes to me, sitting home praying, sitting home listening to the word, Sitting home, binging on Netflix. Don't not going to say I haven't done it. I think I've seen every episode of Grey's Anatomy three times. From the beginning to the end. I can almost quote them now. And the Lord said to me the other day, how long? I said, oh, excuse me, Lord. I, I, I do know this one, don't I? Okay, I know this one from front to back. Let, let, let me turn Netflix off. Let, let, me, let me listen to your word. Let, let me let your word run through the house. Yeah, he checked me. My thinking was off. This was not Netflix time. This was time for me to change my thinking, to get closer to him. This is time for me to manage my mind. Go to Hebrews real quick. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. It says, For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, took part of the same, that through death he might destroy, listen, him that had the power over death, that is he, the devil. And verse 15, and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you notice that every verb in those two verses is past tense? He has already done it. He said, he had the power, the enemy. He said, but through death, we worship the Lord with communion this morning. Through death, through my burial, through my resurrection, I took that power from him. And I said, now all power is given to me. Yeah. That's what Jesus said, all power. And then because he had the power, he delegated it to us. Yeah. He said, now I'm giving it to you. Roy, you got the power, brother Roy. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Why? Because he gave it to me. Now, if my mind is not right, I not only don't know what to do with it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, don't shout me down. If my mind is jacked up, turn, turn to Matthew 22. Oh, Lord, you're going to see something now. And you won't be able to turn. They'll put it up for you because I'm going to give it to you in three, in three translations. In Matthew 22, verse 29. But if you have your mobile phone, I'd rather you just be taking notes today, though, because you can't get everything I'm going to pour into you today. But you'll receive the impartation, and then you'll go back and study these scriptures. Matthew 22, 29 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Mm, that's King James. But you better look. You ready to shout? Put your shouting clothes on. Because here come the living. The living said, but Jesus said, your error is caused by your ignorance of the scriptures and of God's power. Mm. Now, now that, that, that ain't the shouting yet. Because okay. here come the shouting right now. The message Bible says, Jesus answered, you're off base on two accounts. You don't know the Bible, and you don't know how I work. Oh! You don't know the Bible, and you don't know how I work. If you knew the Bible, you would understand that where it says, James 4, 7, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he would flee. You're resisting without submitting. Because you won't think whatsoever things are true. You still mad at Aunt Betty for what she did 20 years ago. And every time you think about her, instead of you letting it go and forgiving her, 
Now it's true. It might be true that she did it. It might be a fact that she did it. Yeah. The truth is somewhere in the area there of your thinking. But the truth is, you'll never get your breakthrough holding unforgiveness. And you cannot make the devil flee from you as long as you won't submit to God in every area that you know to submit to him too. So that's why you got preachers. That's why we come to you. That's why we break this word down to you. So you will know, I need to submit to God in forgiveness. You know, last week, and I'm so thankful for this church at Love Ministries. Uh, last week, uh, our, one of our senior prophets in our church brought you the word. She brought you the word two weeks in a row, as a matter of fact. And uh, last week, in her message, she prophesied 17 different times. And I'm sitting there seeing the faces of the people that she's prophesying to. Not the ones she called out their names to. The ones she was giving words to from the word. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing their, wor their faces. So I pull up the stream. They wasn't even watching. I said, oh my God. I said, God, that word was for such and such. So I picked up the phone and started to text. You know I hate text messages. The Lord wouldn't let me text. I, I was in a, a time where I just couldn't. He wouldn't let me text. He said, what they don't get is the word she just gave them is the part one to the word I'm going to give them next month and then the three that's going to come the next month. And they're going to be off because they didn't get part one. He said, and you, you can't make people watch their own church. This is that church. He said, she's giving 17 words to members of Love Ministries. And if the members of Love Ministries don't have an ear to hear, what the Spirit of God is saying through the woman of God that he placed in front of them, what makes you think that you texting them is going to make them hear? She didn't call their names. What was she supposed to do, call 17 names out? She didn't even realize what she was doing. She won't even get it until, I was taking notes. He said she won't get it until the master prophet, the one that's, Glink that's raising her up right. instructs her on what she just did. Yeah. All she did was follow me yeah. and say what I told her to say. He said, but all I tell you to do is put the food on the table. Right. You know how the old folks used to do. Mama put the food on the table. Baby, if you don't eat this meal, you will go to bed hungry because there won't be another meal. And I'm not cooking a different meal because Bubba don't like this and Junebug like that. This is the meal that Mama felt led to cook for tonight. And since Mama is the chief cook, whatever the Lord led her to cook was what you were supposed to eat. When we ask someone to stand in this place, whatever they bring is what you need to eat. Now, you can be distracted because the water bottle is sitting up here. <laughs> I read your reports. You can be distracted because it didn't look like the musician knew the note that the singer was getting ready to sing it. If all that distracts you and your thinking from, and don't worry, we'll get that straight too. We're a ministry of excellence. Yes, we, we, we heard it just like you heard it, but I wasn't going to miss the word because the note didn't match up. I wasn't going to miss the word because there was a water bottle sitting here. We're not in our regular sanctuary. We're, we're in a place where we can bring you the word in excellence, where we can preach the word in excellence, where the spirit of God can come out in excellence. And then some of you, oh, I got to say this, and I'll get on back. I got to say this. It was a couple people that I kept seeing their face, and I said, God, he said, they're not hearing her. I said, why aren't they hearing her? He said, because they don't like her style of ministry. As a man thinketh. 
As a man, think it. As a man, think it. So you think you understand how the prophet's supposed to minister, Woo! but you're not a prophet. Oh. Bishop. <laughs> never, never been groomed to be one, haven't been called one, not your gifting. And God said we need all the giftings to be complete. But because that's not your gifting, you think that gifting doesn't speak to you. So you become familiar. Oh, we're used to them ministering like that. We're used to. You might be used to me, but I'm the one that's called to bring you this word. So you better get unused and say, Father, I need to hear from you. I, if you're going to use Bishop's mouth, if you want to use Brother Lamar or Brother Dwayne, you want to use Brother Roy, whoever you want to use, I got to hear from you. I got to hear from you because there's some image changing that needs to be done as it relates to me. So I've got to hear from you. Oh, my God. Hebrews showed us God gave all the power. Jesus had, Jesus, the enemy had the power. Jesus came, he took the power, and he gave it to us. So when you get over to James 4, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and flee. Some of you, the reason he hasn't been fleeing is because you haven't been submitting. But you're going to submit now. See, you can't hold unforgiveness. You can't hold a mind that thinks you already know. All this year, every scripture I've given you has been scriptures that you really could quote. You thought you understood them. But guess what? We pulled things out of them that were fresh. And people who really want to hear from God can hear a fresh word out of Mary had a little lamb and Jesus was his name. Right. You, you need to understand that anytime God is speaking, it's fresh to your intellect. It's fresh to your soulish area. It's fresh to your mind. It's fresh to your subconscious. I've got to hear from you, God, yeah. because I've never been in this place before. No, the United States has never been in a pandemic before. People have never been dying like they're dying before. And don't you tell me that they died from the flu. This many people have never died from the flu. And you can't figure out how it's being spread. And you can't figure out what to do. You can't figure out because all you got to do is renew your mind to the word of God. No evil shall come nigh me. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. See, and I don't, you got to understand this. If you didn't get nothing today, Lord, do I not know my Bible? And do I not know how you work? See, because I thought I knew the Bible. But do I know what you're saying right now? Right. See, I'm, doing, I'm putting together a teaching on health. Uh -huh. And it's not healing. Okay. And what the Lord said is, the people have been taught about healing, but you don't have time to teach healing. You can't even get to them to lay hands on them. You're going to have to teach divine health because when the next one hits, if they don't have a mindset of health, they'll open themselves up to receive something. Oh, you know, that they'll open themselves up. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I hope you're learning what I'm trying to give out today. Matthew 12, mm, mm, mm. look at verse 34 and 35. In the King James, it says, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil give good things for out of your abundance of your heart, that your inner man, your soul, your imagination, your subconscious, the mouth speaketh. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart, his inner man, his subconscious, the one that has been renewed to the word of God, not the one that's remembering everything that everybody ever did to them, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now in the Amplified it says, you offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil, when you are wicked? 
For out of the fullness, the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The good man from his, I'm in verse 35, the good man from his inner good treasure flings forth good things, and the evil man out of his inner evil storehouse flings forth evil things. But look at the NIV. Oh, I love it. It says, you brood of vipers. How can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Let me just stop right there. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. That's what the mouth speaks with passion and really means. Not all that rhetoric stuff. Oh, I love you. You don't love nobody. Don't even love yourself. A good man who brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil that is stored up in him. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that everything of yours comes from your inside. Every single thing, it comes from your inside. And right here, Jesus showed us that he went around the world system. He went around the world system. We've been trying to do better in a cursed system. But we're not in this system. All right. We are in the kingdom. Yes. We are in the kingdom. We are not of this world. We are just in it. Yes. And we are to occupy and have dominion until Jesus comes back. But we have to do it his way. Yes. Our thinking has to line up with what his word says. In the kingdom, you can speak your world into existence, but it has to come out of a mind that has been renewed. It has to come out of a mind and a belief system that wants to see myself in a different place. And it has to line up with God's word. His word says wealth and riches are in my house. Yeah. So if wealth and riches are not in my house, it's not that his word is short, it's that my thinking is short. His word said he will increase you and your children more and the more. Yes, I know your children look like they're crazy now, but his word says he will increase you and your children. Somebody needs to know where that is. Let me tell you, Psalm 115, verse 14, write it down. Meditate on it. Confess it, speak it, call your children's names out. Lord, you said you not only increase me, you said you'd increase my children. In verse 16, he said, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given <laughs> to us. And if you keep reading, he said he freely gave it to us. Yeah. So if the earth is the Lord's and he gave it to me, why aren't I having dominion in it? Because right. of my thinking. Because of my thinking. Because of my thinking. He said, I told you this earlier, that my latter days would be greater than my former days. Mm -hmm. So why have I let the world system make me think that my latter days, that I'm going to crawl on out of here? I'm not crawling nowhere. Mm -hmm. My latter days are going to be greater than my former days. Right. He said he was wounded for my transgression. Yes. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes, all 39 of them, all 39 of them, I am healed. Yeah, I went through something a few weeks ago. I really did. It took a whole week for me to realize it was an attack. I, I just thought I had picked up a bug. That's what I thought. So guess what? The bug operated because I thought that's what I had picked up. Then they gave me some medicine for the bug and had allergic reaction to the medicine. And the medicine didn't work. And then I talked to one of our board members and they said, this attack has come on you because of this, this, and this. And I said, see, one thing I'm programmed for, I hear truth. Yeah. When you speak truth to me, I hear it. Yeah. You speak a bunch of jitterish, uh, but when you speak truth to me, I hung up that phone, I said, what? This is an attack? And it was just like the light went on in the room. 
This is an attack. Oh, this is an attack. Oh, this is an attack. But I have authority over attacks. Wait a minute. You can't attack. Wait a minute. In 48 hours, my whole body shifted. You said it took 48 hours. See how long it take you. Uh -huh. You be so quick to judge me. In 48 hours, my body shifted. Did I not still have symptoms? Just because it was an attack, and just because you found out it was an attack, doesn't make the symptoms go away. Somebody better shout me down. You better shout, don't, don't, don't. But because I found out it was an attack, what it came to do now, it can't succeed. What, what it was sent to accomplish, it cannot work. Were there some debilitating responses as I worked my way out with the medicine of God's word, with the medicine of his word, with the medicine of his word, with the medicine of his word, were there some things and are there some things trying to linger now, which I know are a lying wonder because every attack is a lie. You better hear me, how you think, how you think, how you think, think. See, I need to know what the word says. What did he say? You err because you don't understand the Bible and you don't understand how I work. So if I want to believe whatsoever things are true, I have to know what true is. Yeah, that's right. If I have to believe whatsoever things are just, I have to know what just is. If I have to think, if I have to know what is a good report, a good report may not be that you're supposed to be in my life. Right. It might be a good report to kick you to the curb because you might not be good for my life. Mm -hmm. But I can't do it out of a heart that doesn't like you. Well, oh. Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. See, because, mm, let's go to Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. And take the medicine that's good for your flesh. Right. Take it at a.m., take it at p.m., take it at noon. Take it at noon, a.m., and p.m. because you can't overdose on it. And realize this, God is still God. America, let me say that to you. Jesus is Lord. Houston, let me say that to you. Jesus is Lord. Let me say this, Texas, Jesus is Lord. Everywhere that you're watching, Jesus is Lord. I came to decree that Jesus is Lord. Coronavirus is not Lord. Whoever the president is next week or next month is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. We're not going to have any other gods before us. We're only going to worship the one and true and living God. And church, it's time for you to get your thinking right. And stop thinking that Uncle Sam, I told you this weeks ago, Uncle Sam is just uncle. Huh. Father. Yes. My father owns the cattle on a thousand yes. hills. My uncle just got some authority. But all authority. All authority. All authority. Go to 1 Samuel and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel, very familiar scripture, verse 17, chapter 17. I'll start in about verse 46, or I might vacillate up a little bit and we'll be back. It's a story about a 17-year-old shepherd boy named David. He comes to the front line in this battle. And he comes to the front line, and when he gets there, see, in David's time of out there with the sheep, hold it, I, I got to say this like I wrote it. There are three fears that the enemy uses on all people that are called to do anything for God. It's the fear of rejection, the fear of what you see, or the fear of failure, and the fear of people. Let me say them again. Fear of rejection, and I'm going to break these down in the next few weeks. The fear of failure, and the fear of people. And David comes... And when he's out there, see, the lion represents the fear of what you hear. 
because the lion roars. He doesn't do anything. He just roars. He roars. He was rejected by his family. So there's the rejection, the fear of rejection. And then there's the fear of people, fear of failure, fear of people. Out there with the lion and the bear, what I see, a great big bear, and I'm not afraid of it. And I hear the lion roar, and I'm not afraid of that. And my family has already rejected me somewhat. And even when I get now to the front line, they tell me, boy, go on back with them sheep. You know you don't belong up here. What you, what you going to do up here? You can't do nothing. You're just a boy. You 17 years old. You ain't a full grown man yet. Excuse me, children. You ain't. You shouldn't say it that way, but I did. You, you, you're not fully developed. You're, you're not supposed to be there. Somebody's getting it. God's getting ready to use some people that's not fully developed. God's getting ready to use some people because the potential that he put in them, he needs to bring out of them now. So he gets there, and the good news is, in his time of quarantine, in his time of being out there with nobody, he overcame those three fears. While you're in the house, are you overcoming those fears or are you feeding them? Are, are, are they manifesting more and more in your life because of paranoia and, and tools that the enemy uses to make you feel paranoid? Or are you really settling it? Jesus is Lord over my life. For God I live, for God I'll die, for God I'll stand up and say what the word says. Are you really, or are you just running from one thing to the other, even in a time of pandemic? Have you learned to be still and know who God is? Because in order for you to stand up to the Goliath that's getting ready to come to your door, you've got to have mastered these three fears. And you've got to have mastered them, not in your own intellect, not in your own might, not in your own systems, not in that way thing you went over there and picked up because you thought the word didn't work because you didn't understand the Bible and didn't know how God works. So you picked up some old nonsense that they trying to peddle with a little bit of Bible in it. Don't, don't shout me down because I'm preaching in your house. So here's David. And then Goliath sends his big curse. He curses him. And whenever someone curses you, you got to answer that curse. Oh, I like what David did. David starts telling Goliath, I'm going to cut your head off. And not only am I going to cut your head off, I'm going to feed your head to the buzzards. I know the scripture says fowls of the air. I'm still in it. Please trust me. But they were buzzards. And then he said, move over, Goliath. There's an army behind you. I'm going to get all of them too. And then he said, because faith is always now, he said, today. Look at verse 46. Today. Not tomorrow. Today. I'm going to cut your head off, feed it to the buzzards, and all them boys is with you. I'm going to kill them too and feed them to the buzzards. How is a 17-year-old going to do that? First of all, he got to think he could do it. Uh -huh. And he, he couldn't say it with that much boldness because everybody else was back behind the lines, shaking in their boots. Yeah. Everybody else was back behind the lines, being nervous by what they heard, being afraid of what they saw, being scared of what the people would say about their God could not protect them. But they didn't know their God. And they hadn't been alone with him enough to realize, he, I slayed the lion yep, yeah. and I slayed the bear. Mm -hmm. So guess what? God, you, come against, you didn't just come against me, buzzard. You came against the God I serve. Mm -hmm. Church, this virus is trying to say that the church can't do what the church is supposed to do. There are circumstances going on in your life. They're not just coming against you. They're coming against the God you serve. Yeah. I'm right back there in the message Bible in Matthew 22, verse 29. You do err. You keep making the same mistakes over and over again for two reasons. And I'm telling you what they are. You don't know my scriptures. 
And when people try to tell, teach them to you, you don't want to hear them. It's not that you can't know them. You don't want to know them. You want to hold on to what you thought you knew in the past. When I'm doing a new thing and behold, it springs forth speedily. Yes. And I'm giving you revelation and understanding for the times that you live in now. You don't understand my scriptures and you don't know how I work. So when I'm speaking to you, you think it's for somebody else. You haven't church in your house, but you're in the kitchen cooking instead of sitting there listening to this word. You, you're going to go back and get it, but you don't ever go back and get it. And trust me, you're going to need this word. So David, 17 years old, says, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to do it by my own hand. God's going to enable me to do it. Yeah. Look how that boy thought. When I studied this, it said not only had, did he have a renewed thinking, but he saw himself the way God saw him. I see myself the way God sees me. And because he had that right image, let me help you right now. Many of you are called to do great exploits in the kingdom, but you can't do them from low self-esteem. You can't do them from poor me. And you can't do them from a haughty, I'm all that. No, Christ in me is all that. Christ in me is the hope of glory. It is God who has at work to will and to do for his good pleasure. God has so much for us to do. He has so much for us to accomplish. I'm going to ask 30 people today to go with me for the next 30 days starting today. I want 30 people. I just heard 300. I was supposed to be 300 people. I, Lord, I, see, my thinking was too small. I just heard 300 to pray the prayer of Jabez every day, three times a day for the next 30 days. Lord, enlarge the way I see me so that I can see me, my territory. That's what it means. My understanding, my land value, the value of what I see. I want you to pray it three times a day for the next 30 days. Today is the first for the next 30 days. I can tell you unequivocally because I heard God when he said it. He said, if they'll pray it for the next 30 days, three times a day, I'm going to enlarge the image of them on the inside of them and nothing will be impossible to them at the end of 30 days. He said, it won't take me a long time. I just need to change the way they think about who they are in me. I just need to change the way they think about who they are in me. I just need to change the way they see themselves in me. And once they see themselves accurately in me, nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible. This year has been commanded to be a good year for you. Yes. Yes. That was the word of the yes. Lord to yes. us before 2020 started. Mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie. Right. Don't no pandemic change what God has commanded to happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. He has commanded 2020 to be a good year mm -hmm. for every one of you. Mm -hmm. Will you agree with him? Will you allow your thinking? Because if I think it, think it, think it, think it, think it, pretty soon I'll speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. And when I speak it out of a renewed mind and a renewed conscious and a renewed soul and a subconscious that believes what God said, manifestation has to come. Yes. If I just think it off the top of my head, and let me just kill something right now. The American dream is not for you. <laughs> The American dream is for a select few. It was set up so that only a select group could get it. And when other people didn't get it, they just kept clawing to get it. God said, I didn't place you in America to live on the American dream. I placed you in America so that my plan for your life could manifest. And it's greater than the American dream. My plans for you, my thoughts for you, my ideas for you, my promises to you are greater 
than the American dream that is an elusive dream set up for you to miss it every time. But my plan is sure. My promise is sure. My provision is sure. And what I say about you is what shall come to pass in not many days hence as you allow the word to renew your mind, as you learn the scriptures and learn how I operate and walk with me. Give God a praise for his word today. Come on, give him a real praise. for. Give him a praise for his word today. If you're with us today and have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say, I know about God. Of course you know about God. You wouldn't be tuned into this if you didn't know about God. And you want to know more about him. That's why you stayed in with us for all this time. But you say, today, I really want to give my heart to the Lord. Today, I want to come into the family of God. Today, I want to give all of me to the God who created me, even before I was in my mother's womb, who put the potential in me and is ready now to come back and get it. If that's you, would you just ask the Lord right now, Father, I know without Jesus I'm lost. I know without Jesus I die and go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be saved. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you went to hell for me. I believe right now you're seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender my life to you. If you prayed that prayer, you're now born again. I wish you'd tell somebody, text somebody, I just got saved. I was just born again. If that's you, I need you to text born again to 713-849-LOVE, 5683. We're going to send you back. A little PDF that tells you what just happened to you and explains to you. Because, see, you have to understand the scriptures. If you don't understand the scriptures, you'll keep erring. I have to understand the scriptures, and I have to see how God works. So we're just going to send you about five pages. A little PDF will come right back to whatever number that you text us from, and you'll get that so you can study you're watching us on YouTube or live stream or Facebook, subscribe to our station, S sign up for notifications because every time we come on, I want to teach you the word. I am called to teach this word of God. I am called to make this word applicable in your life so that you can live it, understand it, and walk in the benefits of it. I want to do that in your life. So make sure that you connect with us in that way. Now it's time that you can sow your seed into this ministry, that you can give your offerings, your tithes, your gifts of support, your gifts of love. We have four ways of giving here at Love Ministries. You can text your giving to 54244. Text LMMG, Love Ministries Mobile Giving. You can zell your giving. You zell immediately to our email address, which is contact at lmfc.org. You can use the Cash App, which our Cash App is LMFC77. And if you're on our website, there's a donate button right at the top right hand of your screen. And you can click on that button, click donate, and follow the prompts. We want you to sow into this word. Because until you put yourself in the word, this word is just out there. You've got to invest a part of you into this word. I want you to go back and listen to it over and over again. If you're on YouTube, you can just push share and send it right out. You can broadcast it. If you're on Facebook, you can do the same thing. We'll be live again at 7 o'clock tonight on live stream. And you can be seeing this same word again tonight. And I want you to send it out, but I want you to invest in it right now. I want you to sow a seed for your thinking, because you know your thinking is jacked up, especially about you. So I want you to sow a seed into your thinking about you, so that as we go through these next 30 days, 
God can enlarge your territory and you can come into that place of receiving all that he has for you. May the Lord who is gracious, may the Lord who is mighty, watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another is our prayer. We'll be right back here teaching you again next week. The Lord be gracious to you. Amen and amen.